Yeah, I was actually, um, I was quite lucky. I, I, I had a father who totally liked gadgets, you know, um, and, and he was um, one of the managers of a rec center that uh, had a really big theater in it. So he would bring home synthesizers from the theater sometimes, and sometimes he'd, he'd have me sitting up on the up on the chair in the sound booth beside the beside the mixing board, watching all the guys mix concerts, you know, plays different things. Um, and and so I guess uh, yeah, when I was nine or ten, my parents they decided to put me in um, classical piano lessons, and because my dad really kind of was into the synthesizers and technology and stuff like this. Um, we got a, a, a piano that also had um, a small um, sequencer and sound module. It was super basic, um, but yeah, it was an easy way to start. Yeah, um, Cobblestone Jazz, uh, it's a project um, with me, Tiger Dula, and Daniel Tate. Um, and, and it actually came from another band um, called the Modern Duke Left Quartet. Um, which started over 10 years ago. It's been a long time. Um, and that also also includes uh, Colin, uh, whose DJ name is The Mole. Um, so we started doing that. Um, it started out just being, actually our first time ever getting all together was in the nightclub. We never rehearsed and uh, it went over really well. And, and we decided to keep on going with it, you know, every couple weeks. Um, uh, Spencer, Spencer Drennan, um, who, um, it started It Is What It Is, um, he was doing nights, so he'd have us play at his parties and his nights, and then he actually ended up forming the label, it, it kind of in a way as a way of getting our music out, out um, a little bit, so, so it was really cool. Um, cobblestone, it, it switched to Cobblestone Jazz when uh, the mole um, moved to Montreal, um, and so we had three people, we started a new group, um, he was away for a long time. Um, and now we actually live together in Berlin. Um, so now, now actually we've invited him to also be part of the studio group of Cobblestone Jazz. Um, so we all, because there's no, no reason to leave him out. <laughs> we, um, it's, it's better with all four of us. Um, although we still do actually tour separately, just, just kind of as a, as a way to make it easier to, to play sometimes, because not, not, you know, you can't always have four people on the road. I, I really, yeah, just kind of feel it out um, with when I'm making music. It's the same as it's the same as when I'm in the studio. Actually, I I, I certainly favor um, doing the mixes just live to stereo track rather than rather than sitting and arranging them on a computer. Um, they just seem to come, they just seem to come out better, um, and, and there seems to be a little bit more of like a kind of a pushing or like a falling feeling. With the music, which I kind of, which I kind of really like to go for um, when I'm doing it live, and it, so yeah, I never, I never really know what's coming next until until I just feel like it's the right place to go, <laughs> and it's really split second. I don't, I don't actually, I don't really have anything planned at all when I'm playing live. It's, it just, I just kind of go with the flow. It's, it's fun that way. <laughs> Yeah, it'll be, it'll be because I have all the parts, um, well, for the most part, um, yeah, completely separated. So, and and also separated on, on the mixing board. So, yeah, you know that, and then on top of having that with with always having to program new drums, yeah, it's, it comes up, it's, it comes across totally different every time, which which is more exciting for me actually. I think if, if I was playing the tracks from from a computer and they and they were just arranged and I, and all I was doing was. I don't know what I would be doing at that point, actually, <laughs> if, if it was like that. But it would be pretty boring for me, so. Um, yeah, much of the horror of a lot of the promoters that try and book me, that I, mean, I end up using more and more, <laughs> I guess, yeah. <laughs> um, um, yeah, it's funny, actually, a lot of times you just, ask, you just ask this question, and, and like 15 minutes ago, the, the sound technician from here said, and he's like, he's like, wow, your tech writer is so easy to, get, to pull together. <laughs> But yeah, no, it's uh, it's for for, <laughs> for me um, the the way that I play um, is very hands on and um, and it's actually just not possible to do what I do on a computer. It's, um, the equipment isn't available to be able to do that, um, and also too the way I use the synthesizers. Um, 
um, you know, the way that I play the 101, and, and uh, you, I can't do that with because with with digital synths because of the latency problem with them. Um, and and on top of that, they just don't sound as good, anyways. Um, so, so yeah, on, so on stage, yeah, it's usually um, I've got a I've got a um, an 808 clone that just came out that MF Beat made. That's really cool. That's that's all analog. It sounds amazing, actually. Um, and then usually a 909 SH 101, like 24 or 32 channel mixing desk, and then bunch of digital stuff too, you know, the effects are digital and, and a lot of the sounds that started as analog um, in my studio are recorded onto the computer. They come back out into separate channels. Um, you know, so there's certainly, there's certainly a good use of digital stuff as well. Um, you know, it, with Ableton Live and stuff like that, you know, it's, it works well. <laughs> It's so good, but to have it come out on a label that is primarily techno and house music, um, start releasing, you know, down tempo or hip hop, um, and still be able to get um, the attention that it deserves, um, it's really nice. Um, so yeah, I guess it was just really, really just about being able to release just good music without um, it being attached to a, a certain genre. Like that, I guess. Oh, I love it here. Yeah. That, um yeah, last last time I played um, at Culture Box, I, think I played for like two and a half hours or something like that. I was, <laughs> and it was crazy actually because I think when I showed up, one of my bags didn't show up, so I actually had none of my equipment. I don't think. I think maybe I might have just had my just my computer and a sound card or something like that. But I think that like the power adapters for a bunch of my gear weren't weren't there. And the guys here brought down way more than than even the gear that I needed. They just uh, someone you know picked up their studio and dragged the whole thing down here. So it was, it was awesome. Um, yeah, I, I really I really like it here. <laughs> <laughs> 